Well, we're starting to see some activity here in our birdhouses. And remember, if you're going to check your birdhouses to see if there's any activity, always go up and tap on the side first of all, because you don't want to have any unpleasant surprises trying to peek in and the bird fly out and hit you or just startle you. So always tap on it to make sure there's somebody in there that they're going to fly out first of all. Now this uh, is actually called a bluebird house, and we have a Phillips uh, screw there in the top that we've loosened up so we can actually take the top off to check and see. And when you look inside, you'll find that we have a Carolina chickadee nest with four speckled eggs. And you can look at the nest and notice that it's really uh, has a little bit of hair and some other feathers and grass, but it's really neat compared to like a starling or a sparrow nest. And so again, we've got four eggs in there and we're real excited about that, that we've got some uh, inhabitants here in our box. Now, we have several uh, bluebird boxes around for cavity nesting type birds and there's not a lot of activity in the other boxes, but we understand that there'll be two to three more nesting periods, so chances are still pretty good that we'll get some more action in some of these boxes. But at the present time in some of the boxes, when we open them up, the only thing we're finding are wasps trying to build their nest, paper type nest to the top because it's been kind of cold. So they're trying to attach a nest to the top of the box. And one way that you can prevent that is just getting some Vaseline or salad oil or something like that. And uh, just get a little bit of that. And uh, you can smear that on the top. And that makes a surface too slick where they can't attach it. Now obviously you'd want to knock the nest off that's already there. And then just put a little bit of Vaseline in the area that they're trying to attach to and that should give you some control there in trying to uh, keep that away. Now the other uh, thing to remember is you don't want to disturb them too much, but it, it's okay to go ahead and check the nest from time to time. Now as far as our purple martins here behind us, it looks like they're going to pass us up probably this season since most of them have already migrated into the state and taken up residence. But our expert friends at the non-game wildlife department tell us that that's pretty common for the first time, that it may take as much as two seasons for the purple martins to ever scope it out and find our particular nesting area. So uh, we'll keep up the boxes and hope maybe next year that we'll get some uh, scouts to come in and find them. Because again, we're kind of out in the middle of a big open field. And remember, they're a little bit more attracted to some of the more urban areas. So they're actually a nice bird to keep in an urban situation. Well, we've had just about all the wind we can stand here, so why don't we go inside and talk a little bit about summer feeding and storage of the summer feed. Well, we don't normally think of feeding birds or supplemental feeding of birds during the summertime. Usually we most often associate that with the wintertime when there's not as many insects and other things around for the birds to eat. Well, birds do eat a lot of insects, and that's why we kind of try to uh, promote them and get them attracted here into our landscape. And let me just share with you a typical bluebird diet. Uh, it consists of about 22% grasshoppers, 21% uh, beetles, 10% caterpillars, 9% other insects, 6% spiders, and 32% plant material, which would be seed, various parts of different plants. So you can tell that attracting birds to the landscape or garden can be beneficial, but that doesn't mean that you don't want to try to provide them with some supplemental feeding during the summer too, because that's part of the enjoyment. You can actually continue to attract more through the summer, and I want to give you some tips about some of the things that you can feed birds throughout the summer time. Now, we're going to uh, use one of these nice uh, bird feeders here from the All Cedar bird feeders out of Noble, Oklahoma. And it's a nice one because it protects a little bit of the uh, weather, the rain, but you'll notice on the bottom it actually has a screen so when we put the seed, the sunflower seed on it, moisture will also go through and it won't hold any water and the birds can perch around it. And we'll talk about how that will fit in with the types of things that we're going to use. Now obviously one of the most common mixes of bird seed wouldn't work too well in here depending on the screen size because some of it could fall out although you can get smaller screen size. And this contains sunflowers, millet, wheat, and some other various ingredients. One of the negatives about using a mix like this, the millet and the wheat and some of those things will continually germinate and are a little bit harder to control depending on where you put your bird feeder. Where the sunflowers are a little bit easier to put up 
to pull out and then also uh, if you're mowing in the area you can control a lot of them that way too so you might want to consider some of the negatives when using a mix like this now again our friends at the non-game wildlife department tell us that probably the most nutritious summer food would be the black oil sunflower um, seed and you can see here they have the holes on them and they're more of a solid black color and they're a little bit smaller and if you look at this mix of sunflower you'll actually see some of the striped holes in here and those are actually harder for the majority of the birds to get open the cardinals don't really have any problem but um, they're not quite as nutritious of course they're still going to provide benefits but they're harder to open versus a black oil is one of the biggest negatives on it. Now you may have to pay a little bit more for the black oil sunflower seed and you may have to shop around a little bit more to actually find only the black oil sunflower seed. But either way, both of them are pretty easy to maintain in the garden and the uh, birds really like them. And, and again, it really will depend on your, your purpose and how you're going to feed them. Now one of the things to consider though during summer feeding obviously is how to how to uh, store the feed now we um, put ours here in a uh, trash can we have a scoop that we can use so we can get larger quantities a little bit cheaper but the main thing is we want to keep the mice out during the winter or summer it's a continual problem but more importantly during the summer is a lot of times weevils will come into the various types of grain and eat the hull out and so you're wasting your money and one of our Oklahoma Gardening Ambassadors, Betty Howell here in Stillwater, shared with us a nice little tip where you take a no-pest insect strip and you cut it into small pieces and you actually tape them up to the top of the container here on the lid. And obviously you don't want to cover the whole thing with tape because you need to allow some of the fumes to come out. But that will help uh, control or maintain the weevil population in there. And so that's a really nice tip that we appreciate her sharing with us. So, she also told me, though, that if you store this outside, that the squirrels can eat through this plastic trash can. So we'll be keeping ours in, and that's another good thing to consider, depending on where you're going to store it. Now, in addition to seed, there's also certain birds that like to use leftover fruits and vegetables that will uh, be nice uh, appetite uh, appetizer for the birds. Now, usually we think of uh, various birds that would eat these but the thing that I, I want to tell you about is like when you finish with your banana peelings, uh, don't throw them away or the core of your apple or the peeling from your orange. You can put those in a feeder like this too, just on top or throw them on the ground. A lot of the birds like Oreos, various ones will eat those too. Plus, a lot of people will get squash that's too big or going into late summer or early fall, the fall squash, and they'll actually want to scoop out the seeds. And I'd encourage you to scoop those out and instead of throwing them away or composting them, let them dry, sprinkle those out again. Cardinals especially like to feed on the squash seed. And a lot of times you'll hear about mixes using raisins. Uh, I'd encourage you to rehydrate those, put them in water so it'll make it a little bit easier for the birds to feed on. But again, all kinds of things that you can use to attract birds. Now, one thing that we really don't think of during the summer is soot. And if you've gone to any place that carries bird supplies, you've probably heard about soot, which is a type of fat that mixes in other things, and it's really more for insect-type eating birds to give them more energy because they require a lot more energy, which they would get through the insects. And traditionally, soot looks like this. It's just fat. And, and I also found out going to some of these workshops that the fat that's around the organs of the cow and this comes off from around the kidney is actually better than the fat from right under the skin. So if you go to the butcher shop and you request this, and a lot of times you can get it free because it's waste, try to ask for the soot or the fat that's off the organs of the cow. And that's what we have here. Now, usually you can mold that, get it soft, melt it down. It would take a long time and put in your appropriate ingredients. But Carol Ames which is a wonderful birder from the Tulsa area, shared a recipe that's called a summer soot. And again, she's most enjoyable to visit with, willing to share the recipe, just like gardeners are willing to share their plants. And let me give you that recipe now. You can use one cup lard, and lard, um, make sure you get lard. It looks like shortening, but it is different. The reason it's different, it holds up a little bit better during the summertime. So you use a cup of lard and a cup of crunchy peanut butter and you melt those together over low heat and once they begin to melt 
Then you mix in two cups of regular oatmeal, two cups of cornmeal, one cup of white flour, and a third cup sugar. And then you stir that all up. And let me tell you, if you look at that recipe, it looks almost good enough to eat. And when you're mixing it up, it smells good too. And matter of fact, we had to try to keep Alan from uh, trying to test some of this even because it almost looks like fudge. And this is what it looks like. Once you get it mixed up nicely, you put it in the freezer and freeze it and you can store it that way and then you can just cut it out and put it out in the soot type feeders. You can get cages that are specifically for that or again the uh, mesh bags that, bags that you get grapes and various things in. You can drop that in, hang them up in the trees. The birds will land on them and eat that and it really won't melt that much like you would think it would during the hot summer temperature. And Carol tells us that she has to put this out almost every four days that the birds actually love it and they hardly won't even use some of the other commercial stuff and she also uses that through the winter time as well. So some nice options for supplemental feeding for the birds. Now there's not a better way to get the kids involved in gardening and in birding than to help make containers that you can actually put some of the feed in. And let me share with you some of these that we've made using various products. This is a Purex jug, obviously, and we've just cut some flaps on the side, cleaned it out, let it air out so the fumes are out, washed it out real nicely, and then just devised a little bit of a bamboo cane here that split that catches on just to hold this up. And you can put seed in here, hook wire through it, and hang that from a tree and some of your birds will feed on that. Same thing with the coffee can here. We just cut the metal end off one end, have a lid on both sides, cut a hole about the size of a 50 cent piece and this is for your smaller birds so they can go inside and actually uh, be protected from the larger ones and eat it. You can do the same thing with the milk container just by cutting it open, having a little bit of a shelter with seed in the center and then just use a coat hanger to hang them from the trees, wire them there. Same thing with a gallon jug and something for a perch with holes in it. So all kinds of fun things you can do to make uh, containers for the birds, how to make the seed up. And I'd really encourage you to try it because they'll bring their babies along during the summer too and it makes it nice and really sp a special time to watch the birds and the kids enjoying both times.